Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, a virtual tour of Flanders, Belgium, featuring Breck Putman, Meetings and Incentive Manager, North America for Visit Flanders. My name is Barbara Scafidio. I'm the editor of Preview Magazine and moderator of today's webinar. Before we begin, just a few housekeeping items. During the presentation, feel free to enter your questions in the question box. We will gather them together and hold a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Don't worry if all of your questions are not answered. We'll be providing Brett with them at the end so he can respond offline. If you missed something, the webinar is also being recorded and you'll receive a link via email to access it at your leisure. You will also receive one CEU from the Events Industry Council for your attendance today. For those of you who attend the entire presentation, one lucky uh, attendee will win a fam trip to Flanders, including airfare, accommodations, transportation, tour and events, and most meals. The winner will be drawn right after the webinar, and you will be contacted directly by Breck within the next 24 hours. A little bit about our speaker today. He joined the Visit Flanders team in New York in 2011 with a primary role of promoting Flanders as the prime destination for the North Americans, American meetings industry. His responsibilities include representing Flanders across all market segments of the meetings industry in the USA and Canada, as well as creating, implementing, and executing the North American meetings marketing and sales strategy. In addition to serving on the board of the Professional Convention Management Association's New York chapter, Brett is also a member of a number of industry associations such as SITE, ASAE, and MPI. Busy man. <laughs> so sit back, get comfortable. The webinar begins now. Brett, take it away. Thank you, Barbara, for the introduction. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in uh, to the presentation and uh, joining me on the tour of Flanders. Now, where is Flanders? Flanders is the northern region of Belgium, here in yellow. You see that Belgium sits right uh, in the heart of Europe, in between the larger countries, such as France, Germany, UK. Belgium is about the size of Maryland, so it's a tiny country and very easy to get around in. You see Brussels is in the center, and a train ride from Brussels to Bruges would be about the furthest distance, and it's just less under an hour. You see the yellow part of uh, Flanders is Dutch-speaking, and then the southern part of Belgium uh, mentioned Wallonia is French-speaking. That's the main difference. Now, what is Belgium or Flanders known for? Of course, the beers. Uh, we can't go to the country and not mention the beers or even try a few uh, on our own. Um, there are about 1,600 different kinds of beers, about 150 breweries. We recommend our visitors, meeting planners, um, to join a brewery tour or go behind the scenes and do some beer tastings. Um, Lots of fun is definitely guaranteed. So cheers to beers. And then, of course, chocolates. Um, Belgium is known for the chocolates, but not only that. Uh, there's lots of waffles, fries, shrimp, Michelin star restaurants. Belgium is really a mixture of the refined French cuisine and then maybe a mix of the hearty German cuisine. And it all comes together uh, in our destination. Um, you will enjoy the food um, more than the waffles and the fries, also the Michelin star restaurants. But we'll come back to that a little later. Now, how do we get there? We have daily direct flights uh, from North America, uh, mainly from New York, the two airports, JFK and Newark, also Chicago, Washington, Philadelphia, and Miami, and also Atlanta with Delta has daily direct flights into Brussels. So easy to get to, and once you're there, uh, it's easy to get around. As I said, traveling within Belgium is quite easy by train, but also you see these lovely cities mentioned here in our neighboring countries, London, Paris, Amsterdam, as we like to call them, the suburbs are about less than two hours away by high-speed train. So super easy to get to. I know people that even uh, commute between Paris and Brussels um, on a daily basis. It's only one hour and 20 minutes. 
This means if you are trying to draw attendance from your European members for any conference, they will love coming into Brussels because it's super easy. Now, why do meeting planners love to come to Belgium? Why do they love to come to Flanders? Obviously, the waffles, as you can see in the background, but here you see the list of some other reasons why Flanders is favorable towards um, other destinations. A main one, I would say, is the value for money uh, and the high standard of service suppliers um, and the high level of service that we try to offer. I'm with the Convention Bureau and I'm happy to help you get any quotes, um, help you with RFPs, uh, get quotes from hotels, uh, connect you with the right partners, help you uh, with the VAT reclaiming issues and all that stuff. Um, I'm with the CVB, we work free of charge, so um, definitely reach out to me if you need any help. Now, I would like to give a short introduction video about the destination. It's about one and a half minutes. Um, we're pushing the technology here, so the full video will be available in a link afterwards. It may be a little spotty depending on uh, your computer system. But sit back, relax, and enjoy. For ages, Flanders has been home to the old masters. Still today, Flanders is the place where new ideas are born against a historical backdrop. Are you ready to explore? Nibble on the chocolate beard of Rubens' self-portrait. Experience the winter in Flanders like white powder on your waffles or pedal your way through Brodelian landscapes. Adore the mystic lamb in the Ghent altarpiece, showing the holy traditions. When Icarus falls, Antwerp's fashion catches. Observe Van Eyck, the first master of oil painting. As a true Margarita Van Eyck, eat Belgian fries with pride and enjoy the craftsmanship of one of Belgium's foamiest beers. Where Rubens' cross descents move on the lines of his art. Taste the history of Flanders' culinary treasures. Be a Bruegel rebel angel and party in the land of tomorrow. Come to the heart of Europe to wear, taste, hear, smell, show and honour our Flemish masters. Together, they make Flanders state-of-the-art. Are you ready to stir your senses? Now, let's get into details a little bit. I'm going to talk about the four main cities in Belgium. They are Brussels, Antwerp, Bruges and Ghent. Uh, through little gems uh, to be discovered. Maybe you've been, maybe you haven't. Um, join me to Brussels first. Here we see the picture of the Grand Place. It is a World UNESCO Heritage Site. The flowers you see in the middle is part of the biannual flower carpet in Brussels. It takes place in August. It's absolutely stunning, but even without the flowers, um, the marketplace is truly worthy of a visit. Uh, the tower on the left is the town hall. And as you can see on the first floor, there's lots of people there. Uh, we can help you actually also have that floor for you, for your delegates, for your program, and have maybe a small welcome reception uh, in that town hall. Wouldn't that be nice? Now, a great gastronomy, we spoke about it a little bit already. Um, 18 Michelin star restaurants in Brussels. Uh, for the whole destination of Belgium, there are about 125 Michelin star restaurants. So you eat quite well in Belgium. That number is the largest against uh, well, per capita uh, compared to any other country in the world. So uh, come to Belgium and come with an empty stomach. 
Here we have Tintin. Uh, he is just one of the many comic books, um, artists, um, figurines that exist in Belgium. Uh, the Smurfs, for instance, were also created by a Belgian artist. Um, art is quite big. In Brussels, uh, we can talk about Magritte, we can talk about the Flemish masters, uh, we can talk about Delvaux. Um, there is definitely a lot for the arts lovers uh, in Brussels. When it comes to meetings, we have the main conference center, Square uh, Brussels Meeting Center, pictured here from the panoramic hall with beautiful views over the downtown area. Um, Brussels, I should say, ranks second worldwide for hosting association meetings right after Singapore. So the city definitely has that experience in hosting international meetings. Um, English is widely spoken. Um, the official languages in Belgium are Dutch, French and German. And with uh, Brussels being the capital of Europe and also home to the NATO, uh, many internationals live and work in Brussels on a daily basis. So English is pretty much the business language. So you would not have lots of troubles getting around there. And here are a few of the hotels. Um, I pictured four. There are about 16,000 hotel bedrooms uh, in the city center of Brussels. So there is a wide range of choices. Um, sometimes it's hard to choose. And again, that's why I am here. Feel free to reach out if you want to discover some of these properties and get some quotes. So that was a brief, brief introduction uh, to the beautiful capital of Belgium. And let's move on to the north now, Antwerp. Antwerp is the second largest city in Belgium. Um, pictured here is the harbor and the cruise terminal and the Cathedral of Our Lady. Now, what is Antwerp known for besides its being a big port city, one of the largest in Europe again? It's also the diamond trade capital of the world. Um, so for programs, I suggest coming to Antwerp, uh, visiting the Diamond Museum, or have a diamond experience, go within the diamond square mile. Um, it's very known, it's high security, but it is an experience. Uh, you can learn about the history of the diamonds, you can try on a few, uh, see how they are cut, learn about the four C's, as they call them, and also have a diamond cocktail on a beautiful Antwerp rooftop. Now, what is diamond cocktail? Everyone gets a glass of bubbles or champagne, and every glass can contain a shiny gem, and one of them would be a real diamond. Um, it's a lot of fun, especially for your programs, and especially in Antwerp. Now, who's the lady on the right here in the picture? This is Diane von Furstenberg. She is a fantastic ambassador for Antwerp. She was born in Brussels. Um, Antwerp has one of the top fashion academies in Europe within the uh, fashion world. Antwerp is quite known. Generally, it's good for shopping, um, and again, great fashion. Here is the downtown. Um, I must note that many of the downtowns, Brussels, Antwerp, but also in Bruges and Ghent, are pedestrian-only zones. As you can see, there are no cars to be spotted, only horse and carriage, or bike, or just uh, pedestrians. Taxis are allowed, or uh, group buses also, but uh, if it's arranged um, prior. So it's a city of art. Rubens is Antwerp's uh, most known uh, Flemish master. Uh, this is a picture from inside the cathedral, which again can be used for programs. Uh, for instance, a private organ concert. Why not on the balcony of the church overlooking the glass iron uh, windows and the beautiful art species of Rubens. It is an experience. It's a harbor city. Um, as I said, it has one of the largest ports in Europe. It used to be the largest one for a while uh, in the 1800s, um, before, or even before that, 1700s, uh, before Napoleon uh, conquered, conquered it. Um, the Red Starland Museum is one of the main museums in Antwerp. It tells the story of two and a half million immigrants that came through the port of Antwerp, embarked the ships of the Red Star Line on their quest to a new life in the Americas. Uh, the museum tells the story of those immigrants. It opened a few years ago with the help of Ellis Island, and it is truly an experience, especially for our American-Canadian visitors. Um, on the other side of the picture, you have the Moss Museum at the stream, and in the top there is a 
two-star Michelin restaurant. Truly a must visit, or why not organize an evening cruise on the beautiful river uh, overlooking the old town of Antwerp. Lots of incentive possibilities there as well. A grasp out of the hotel offer, about five to 6,000 bedrooms in Antwerp. Uh, the Hilton, uh, pictured here with the ballroom, has one of the largest ballrooms in Belgium. Um, so lots of event space there. Um, no lack of event space, let's say. And of course, Antwerp has been the home to numerous events and uh, meetings, one of them being the Olympic Games in 1920. And here is just a selection of a few more recent events that took place there. Here is a picture of the brand new, newly renovated um, convention center. Uh, it is adjacent to the zoo of Antwerp, which is one of the oldest um, animal parks in Europe. It is really a beautiful location right next to the train station. Um, it opened this year. The main hall is state of the art. Uh, it connects old and new. Um, there is about 2,000 seats for a plenary, uh, lots of exhibition space, and about 30 breakout rooms. So ideal for a meeting, um, as I said, right next to the train station, which puts you in the other European cities in a finger snap. Now, um, I think the video tells a lot more than words. So again, it could be a little spotty. Uh, you will receive the link uh, in an email afterwards. Um, but again, sit back and enjoy. After people have experienced this hall and its Congress function, they're going to find themselves having to stand on their tiptoes anywhere else they go to equal the quality they would experience here. You don't just want to be sitting in a bunker. What you need is somewhere that has life and vitality, space. You've got a zoo. You've got natural light coming in. It is literally the room with a zoo. A room with a zoo, isn't that amazing? Now, let's move on to Bruges. Bruges is truly uh, one of the top tourism spots uh, in Belgium. Um, it is a treasure chest of the Middle Ages. Uh, people call it the Venice of the North. It is weaved through with canals and medieval buildings. It's truly like stepping back in time. It's like the city hasn't changed in 700 years. It's cobblestones, horse-drawn carriages, uh, the scent of waffles. Um, it's an experience. Um, just showing some pictures here uh, to give you an idea. Uh, but the best way to discover is, of course, to be there. People like to call it the chocolate capital, but that counts for every town in Belgium, I would say. We love our chocolates. Um, there's about 50 chocolate shops. We always recommend our meeting planners to take part in a chocolate workshop, uh, make your own, put on the cooker's hat, and just make those chocolates on your own. Uh, Bruges has also a very active local CVB who can help you with getting very nice meeting spaces. This is a picture of the provincial court um, historic location, uh, seats about 350 people. Um, again, price is quite favorable. Uh, the buildings are owned by the city who are not uh, trying to make uh, necessarily profit of um, the meeting planners even more. When you have a meeting in um, Bruges, you would get a free welcome reception in the town hall. This is a picture of the town hall with the gold uh, laced ceilings, uh, painted walls. It's truly uh, beautiful. You would get a free welcome and a beer reception in the mayor's office. We like to do that for many of our international conferences taking place in Bruges for more than two days. And I skipped a picture here. Uh, this is just another idea for an incentive. Why not have a fencing initiation in a medieval city gate? Um, truly step back in time. Uh, we have many more ideas, um, but just reach out to me um, when you get there. The hotels, uh, there are again about 4,000 rooms in Bruges. Um, the hotels are a little smaller, um, but quite nice. They have this boutique touch, um, high end. Uh, classic field. 
And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk a little bit about Ghent. Ghent is a city that's located right in between Brussels and Bruges. It takes about 30 minutes uh, to go to uh, from Brussels. Uh, it is a wonderful town. It's a university town. Um, I went to school there uh, 200 years ago. Um, it is Europe's best kept secret, according to Lonely Planet. Um, and it truly is. Uh, people are always surprised. Uh, pe most people know about Bruges, but Ghent um, is a little less known, but it looks like Bruges. It has the canals and the old buildings. But to me, it also has this um, very energetic vibe because of the students, especially. Uh, you can see it here. They like to uh, chill out along the riverbanks um, with a glass of wine, enjoying the sunset. Um, and we would recommend you to do that also. They have some very nice um, special venues. Uh, in the bottom left, you can see the Castle of the Counts. It is a castle dating back to the 10th century. Um, it's very well preserved. Again, as you can see also, Ghent has a pedestrian zone city center. Only trams or horse-drawn carriages or boats are the modes of transportation in the city center. Um, there are some other very nice locations like the Ghent Opera and the Old Fish Mine. This is just one uh, pick out of the wide range of the selection. So uh, I can definitely help you find the location that would suit your group the best. They have a good selection of hotels. Um, the Marriott is located right on the water. Um, there are some other nice hotels. Again, it's, it's a bit like Bruges, um, smaller hotels. Uh, up to 200 rooms in most cases, um, with nice event spaces, but again, a very nice uh, characterful vibe. And here is, again, a small video to give you um, an idea of what Ghent is about. It is a video made by the tourist office for Ghent. Um, again, it could be a little spotty depending on your system, but I hope uh, it comes out okay. Enjoy. A very fine summary cup to every one of you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. My name is Jan, but you can call me Captain or Sir Captain Sir. Sir Captain Sir. Okay. What's my name? Sir Captain Sir. Okay. And you like the Belgian beer? Oh, you prefer Singa? Singa is also good. Huh? I like Singa too. But Belgian beers are really nice too. Huh? Look, like these children, I think they all had Belgian beers today. Yeah. Most children are drunk in Belgium. You see that gentleman? He's probably drunk too. Oh. 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 man. Oh, this is a problem. Uh, no, nobody panic. Nobody panic. It's okay. There's a, there's life jackets here. Everybody take the life jackets. <laughs> Oh, this is not normal. Uh, um, we have uh, we have two options. Those who want to jump, follow me. I'm gonna get help. And if you don't want to jump, you stay in the boat. But it's gonna take two hours. You can follow me. It's not far. It's it's just there. We can get out. Is that possible? There you go. That gives you a little taste of what Ghent is all about. Very fun city to visit. And we've almost reached the end of the presentation. I'm just going to give you a quick summary, uh, some takeaways, uh, some things to remember. Flanders is truly a place to meet. 50% of all the travelers going to Flanders from the United States go for a MICE purpose, meetings, incentives, conferences, or events. The other half, obviously, is leisure. Brussels ranks second worldwide as a host for association meetings. That's right after Singapore. And that's ranking is by the Union of International Associations. Antwerp is our second MICE destination in Flanders and um, stepping up with the brand new convention center um, next to the wonderful zoo. 
Remember the historic cities, Ghent and Bruges, ideal for smaller programs um, and meetings. Uh, there is a great price quality reinsurance in the whole destination. Um, there are lots of incentive ideas, leisure assets, pre and post tours. Um, also, I must mention, easy to get to the neighboring countries if you want to do some pre and post tours in other destinations. And of course, premium customer service, we are here to help you. One incentive idea is what you see here pictured is the shrimp fishing in the North Sea. It is a World UNESCO Heritage Protected Activity um, and is the only place in the world where shrimp are being caught by uh, these big horses and out with the nets. You can do it with a group also. It's a fantastic incentive um, to go out in the morning with the fishermen and come back and have a shrimp peeling initiation and then why not bring out some chefs and create your own lunch and enjoy that with a fresh Belgian beer overlooking the North Sea. Doesn't that sound amazing? We offer free welcome receptions in our cities Antwerp, Bruges and Ghent if the conference remains for a few days and if there is a clear link with the city's export activities. Contact information. I am the Meetings and Incentives Manager North America for Flanders, as Barbara told me, uh, told us at the beginning of the presentation. I'm based in New York City, so very close to you, just a quick phone call away. Um, feel free to reach out to me anytime. If you're going to IMAX America, come see me at the Visit Flanders booth, B2817. We'll be located right across the wonderful London booth. Uh, but do come by and mention the preview webinar and get a free box of chocolates. Uh, I think that's it for me. Thank you so much again for tuning in and I do duly hope to welcome you in the destination quite soon. Or why not meet you at IMAX America and talk business. Thank you everyone. Well, thank you so much, Brett. And um, I'll be at IMAX and I will come by for those chocolates. <laughs> More than welcome. <laughs> so I want to encourage everyone to um, to plug in your questions. We've got uh, time for a Q&A and Brett is here to help. So if you've got some specifics, please do um, plug them in. We've got a few um, already. I would like to start with seasons, Brett. So what is the best um, time of year for a group to book um, in Flanders? Uh, that is a great question, um, but it is a question I should answer on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. Why do I say that? Um, Brussels, for instance, uh, tends to get quite busy with European summits or uh, political gatherings uh, that take place there. Um, so, And they all depend, of course, on the agenda. Uh, in general, all seasons are great to visit. Um, Spring is very nice, uh, but May tends to be quite busy, especially in Brussels and Antwerp. Um, September is when the Euro top summit starts. So it, it's really um, pick and choose. Um, the winter time is fun as well, because many of our cities have beautiful Christmas markets uh, where you can enjoy some mold wine and, and ice skating and Christmas music. So um, Truly, the whole year is fun to visit. Uh, the summer months, July and August, uh, tend to be quite calm in Brussels because many of the uh, European um, lobbyists uh, go home to their countries. The, the parliament is in recess, so Brussels tends to calm down a little bit in the summer, so you could get better rates then. Um, but again, it's throughout the year that you can have those uh, great times to visit. So uh, I would say if you plan to go, uh, check with me and I'll help you. Okay. Um, I was um, surprised to see the 50% um, mice activity statistic. Um, that's, a, that's a large um, meeting industry you have. Uh, can you talk a little bit about some of the conventions you have hosted? Uh, sure. Um, well, we have the, and we have mainly associations uh, coming to the destination. 
Um, why is that? Because of the presence of the European Union that's there, um, but it's also easy to get speakers uh, from our universities, Antwerp, Ghent, Leuven, which we didn't really talk about, has fantastic universities, um, associations love to come here and dig into that um, knowledge that's available, um, and the students, of course. Um, incentives are popular also, but to a lesser extent, because it's a little more less known than other destinations. So we are definitely getting there. Um, one conference that's coming up uh, off the top of my head is the International uh, Language Association. They're coming to Brussels with about a thousand people. Um, we have the Music Society coming to Ghent and Bruges um, next year. They come with about 500 people. So um, yeah, there's definitely a lot going on. Antwerp, a big one for Antwerp is Breakbulk, um, also an American-based um, organization. They come with about 5,000 people every year. So um, yeah, people do find their way. To Flanders and we couldn't be more happy about it as you mentioned indeed 50% is a large portion for mice um, it has everything to do with our great location uh, the presence of the institutions the European institutions the universities um, and just the great connection uh, within Belgium but also with European neighboring countries people uh, it's easy for people to get into and out of so um, the language is no barrier, so many reasons why people like to come. And I didn't even mention the chocolates and the waffles, so. <laughs> well, now we definitely, the chocolates are ingrained in my mind. So I have a, um, uh, a question from uh, Agnes and wanted to say a personal hello. Um, can you talk about flight accessibility a little in a little bit more detail from the U.S. into Antwerp specifically? Hello, Agnes. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, yes, so every flight coming into Belgium is going through the main airport. It's Brussels Airport. Brussels Airport sits right outside the city of Brussels. It takes 17 minutes by train to get from Brussels Airport into the Brussels Central Station. So very easy connection. Now, to get from Brussels Airport to Antwerp used to be very complicated with change, of trains in Brussels and get on a new train, get to Antwerp. Now that's all out of the way. They have established a direct rail express connection with Brussels Airport and Antwerp Central Station, and you would get there in 31 minutes. So compare that to any city in the United States. I look outside of my window, I see New York City. Getting from JFK to uh, New York takes me about an hour. So it is truly quite easy to get around in Belgium so um, and from the airport. Um, so yes. Sounds like it. Convenient. Yeah. <laughs> um, another question from Kim. Can you uh, speak to average um, sleeping room rates? And obviously that's going to vary by season destination, but um, we're trying to get a get a ballpark here. Yeah, hmm. uh, it depends from city to city and, as you say, from season to season. And then, of course, also the, the, the star range um, of hotels, four star, five star. Um, so it really all depends. And it's, uh, it's almost impossible for me to put a price on it, to be honest. Um, I can say that we do compare favorably uh, towards other capitals when it comes to uh, capital cities, Brussels, compare it to London or Amsterdam or Berlin. Uh, we compare favorably and uh, we are similar, I would say, to cities in Eastern Europe in terms of pricing. So um, it happens that you can get a deal in Antwerp for 180 a night, breakfast included. Don't quote me on it. Um, but it's I've seen it pass so or even less uh, sometimes a little more it really all depends on uh, the right time and again I am happy to help you there uh, selecting um, the best time to go and help you um, keep an eye on that budget which is important to all of our visitors absolutely mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the interesting activities you showed um, that certainly would be ideal for incentive groups like the shrimp um, activity. What size group would they be able to accommodate? 
maximum? Right. Well, again, um, I would say I've done it in the past, and it was with a small group of about 30 people, um, and that was just fine. Uh, but how it could be done is uh, the group can be divided up for a few days. Uh, the Belgian seaside is about 30 minutes from Bruges. So um, it is fun to have a program in Bruges and go out to the seaside and do, for instance, the shrimp fishing. Uh, but there is a lot of uh, other stuff you can do uh, at the Belgian seaside. Um, there's parasailing, there is all kinds of um, active sports activities uh, on the water, on the beach. Um, so there's definitely a, a wide range. Golfing, for instance, is quite popular on the Belgian seaside. So if you're talking purely incentive and you want to include the Belgian seaside, I do recommend staying in Bruges. And then why not also discover um, the Flanders fields? I haven't really touched that subject, but um, Belgium sits in the heart of Europe and was in history often the location where many battles were fought between um, fighting quarreling nations um today the marks are still in flanders fields um flanders fields is about an hour south of um bruges and it's a little more serene as an activity but it's definitely worthwhile visiting and remembering uh those heroes in the past that fought for freedom and liberty as we continue to do so so that is just a uh, one example, uh, if you're talking purely incentive, um, but again, we have a big book here, um, and I'm I'm excited with any client that wants to come to dig through it and and find uh, the right program. Okay, uh, a, a shout out to Virginia. Hello, Virginia, and she asks um, about culinary specifically. Uh, agendas that you might offer for pre or post experiences. Do you have some of those in this big book? Yes, absolutely. Hello, Virginia. Um, as I said, there are 122 or 125 Michelin star restaurants. Those are just the Michelin star restaurants. Um, there are many other great restaurants that don't even have a star. So we do have those programs. Uh, we have this program called Flemish Masters uh, Chefs. Um, and it's really meeting the chefs, cooking with the chefs, uh, eating with the chefs, uh, be in their kitchen, um, go grocery shopping with them. Um, we have a lot of good DMCs in the destination that offer uh, programs like that. And yes, I do recommend uh, doing something like that in the theme of cooking and, in, and discovering uh, the hearty and refined Belgian cuisine. So moving into hotel properties, what is the largest property in each of the cities, the, the major cities you mentioned, and um, room size? Um, I would say, so for Brussels, uh, we have, I think it is um, the hotel. Yeah, the hotel, they have about 500 rooms shortly followed by uh, the Steigenberger, which used to be a uh, Conrad hotel. They have, they also have a large number of rooms. Um, so you see the hotels in Belgium are just not comparable to the ones that we can find in Orlando or Las Vegas, where they have thousands of rooms. Uh, so Brussels, the largest room size would be, um, well, number of rooms is about 600. Um, room sizes, well, they all depend from hotel to hotel. Um, but they are quite large, uh, especially when we compare to New York City. Uh, but it's hard to make a general um, comparison, to be honest. Um, in Antwerp, I would say the largest hotel is, well, they're probably both the Radisson and the Hilton. They were both in the picture. Um, and then Bruce and Gent, uh, they all are quite similar, I would say. Uh, they range between 100 and 250 bedrooms. Um, Oftentimes it happens when larger groups visit our cities, uh, groups are being split up and put in different hotels. Um, it is not often a problem for many planners because the hotels are really close to each other within walking distance. And it is fun to walk in the pedestrian zone streets of uh, cobblestone streets of Belgium. So definitely, um, again, reach out to me when there's a specific program. Um, it's just, little difficult to make a general uh, assessment here. Yeah. 
This is a, a little bit of a specific question, but it's interesting. Which region would be best for scientific meetings? Scientific meetings? Um, it depends on the kind of science, uh, I would say. Um, science, <laughs> physics. Yeah. Um, well, I would say any city, really. Uh, Brussels, Antwerp. Leuven. Um, again, I want to refer to the universities and probably uh, speakers they want to probably invite, professors. Um, you can really pour out of the large uh, selection uh, that's available. Um, we also need to think about price, uh, size of group, budget. So, um, yeah, it depends on all of those factors. I'm happy to uh, look into that a little deeper offline with the, with the person in question. Okay, so we will pass that um, person's info along to you after the webinar. Uh, a specific question again, um, you haven't mentioned lace making. Is that <laughs> an activity, um, a traditional Flemish art? Yes, yes. Uh, that's a very traditional uh, Flemish art. It's part of the, uh, the whole uh, state of the art. Um, idea that we promote and yes lace making making is definitely something that is still done in Bruges when you walk around uh, you see them sitting uh, outside uh, making that lace and yes we offer um, lace making initiations uh, I must warn you it's not easy it's quite a meticulous job uh, but yes it is in the range of uh, programs that we also offer I have one more question before we wrap up, and I'm sure this is of interest to all groups. Uh, how is Ghent for handicap accessibility? Um, in general, I would say the hotels. Um, there is a standard uh, raised by the Belgian government and also the tourism association that all hotels need to comply uh, in terms of accessibility. Um, and also within the city, um, there are certain rules um, for in terms of accessibility, but seeing that it's a historic city, um, you cannot get everywhere with a, a wheelchair. Uh, seeing the cobblestones and lots of steps and everywhere, um, that's just the historic nature of the city. But in general, hotels and uh, and restaurants are well equipped um, to welcome everyone. Okay. Uh, just want to let everyone know um, that we are going to be contacting you afterwards um, mm -hmm. with a link via email so you can um, repeat this recording at your leisure um, and you will be hearing from us directly about your CEU from the Events Industry Council. We will also um, answer any further questions um, and Brent will call, follow up directly with you and you will be hearing about the winner of the um, the fam in uh, an upcoming email so we really do appreciate you taking your time on this busy afternoon to spend with us and learn more about Flanders and I want to thank Brex so much for all that great information I hope you will go visit him at IMAX uh, and have you can, um, I'll, I'll leave you to, to finish off, Greg. Oh, oh, thank you, Barbara. And uh, also, I have not much uh, to add on to that. I think I spoke enough for today, but um, I do appreciate your presence. And uh, I do look forward uh, to seeing you in, I think it's in a month already, uh, IMAX America. Yeah. So um, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate your interest. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Bye.